Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tar Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. As promised in last week's video, I had mentioned that I was going to continue on in a series on relearning how to reach overhead if you've had any type of damage to the area of the brain that controls the muscles to that specific movement. And so if you've been following along in the first video, I went over the problem with having some muscles that are shortened and how that can interfere with that rhythm between the humerus and the shoulder blade that needs to happen in order to reach the arm overhead. And then in the second video, I talked a little bit about how we need to break the movement down into components. And then the final component would be to put it all back together. So in that video, I went over how to isolate the shoulder blade and the critical movements that are necessary there. And then as promised in today's video, we're gonna go over how to isolate the humerus or the arm bone. The reason that I break it down into isolating the shoulder blade first and then isolating the arm bone movement second is that when you have spasticity or any abnormal movement patterns, joints wanna move together. So a lot of times when you want to reach the arm up, the shoulder blade is either going to excessively come forward and go down or it's gonna excessively pull back and go up. And again, just to review, there's a rhythm that needs to happen. So the shoulder blade needs to move in coordination with the arm bone. If you have abnormal muscle tone or abnormal movement patterns, you lose that rhythm and two things happen. You're either gonna have pain because bones are kind of jamming into each other when they shouldn't be, or you're just not gonna be able to lift the arm because you've lost that angle of pull that the muscle normally would have on the bone for that particular movement. I'm not gonna really go into depth into what that means because understanding that's not really gonna help you, but it's just important to know that when you lose that rhythm, you lose the muscle's efficiency. And so if you're in the really early stages and you're just now connecting a little bit with those muscles, you're not gonna be able to generate the power necessary to actually lift the arm. And it's also important to review if you're just now joining us, that one of the classic signs that you've lost that rhythm is that, and this is how it came up, is uh, someone had asked me in a Facebook group why she could perform reaching laying down, but when she sat up, she just, the, the arm didn't move at all. And in that particular case, that would be one potential cause is that you've lost that rhythm. And so when you sit up, the shoulder blade might do some of those abnormal movements that will interfere with your ability to reach when you're laying down, the shoulder blades in a better position to allow you to reach. So all that was kind of just to catch some of you up that maybe are just now joining us, but I highly recommend that was really fast. I highly recommend that you go back Back and you watch the previous two videos I'll put links to those in the description below they will make this video make a whole lot more sense so now getting to this video what are we gonna go over in isolating the humerus bone the key components that you need to isolate are external rotation because a lot of times the shoulder blade will drop forward and when you go to lift the arm up it's gonna want to internally rotate so I like for people to be able to isolate external rotation and then building on that being able to flex the shoulder or lift the arm bone forward with the arm bone externally rotated anytime you try and lift the arm and the arm is internally rotated there's potential for damaging some structures in the shoulder and also you just might not be able to generate the power in order to lift it up so that would be the second isolated movement that i think is important to focus on the next one is abduction with external rotation. Again, a lot of times when you wanna move that arm out to the side, you've probably been doing this, you'll lead with the elbow and the arm will actually internally rotate. So learning how to properly abduct the arm or move it out to the side without it internally rotating. And then what we call D2 flexion, which is a diagonal pattern, is extremely critical. A lot of the muscles in our body, they don't run on straight planes, so they actually run on diagonal patterns. So being able to coordinate multiple muscles and multiple joints simultaneously relearning how to move on, move the arm on a diagonal pattern is extremely important. 
It's also functional. We don't usually always lift just straight forward or straight out to the side. So it's also something that I think is practical and functional in returning to normal activities such as reaching into a cabinet. So how do we go about doing this? So starting with the external rotation, there's a few different ways I like to do this. A lot of you probably don't even have the range of motion because your arm has been internally rotated and has really done everything internally rotated. If you can't externally rotate, it might be because the internal rotators are too tight and therefore I would spend a lot of time stretching the arm into external rotation in order to regain the voluntary movement of external rotation. So there's a few ways I like to do this. One is with the elbow bent, that's extremely important, and it's an easier position to, to perform the external rotation, as well as a lot of you do have some flexor tone, so your elbow is already bent. So it's just a little bit easier to isolate this movement in this position. Now, a lot of people will skip over this step or they'll rush through this step. I will tell you, if you cannot externally rotate the arm in this position, I can almost guarantee you're not going to be able to keep that arm externally rotated when you're working on reaching and abduction, some of the exercises that we're going to do next. So I highly recommend that you don't rush through this one exercise, that you stay on it until you can actually see the arm externally rotate. Now, one little side note, it is critical that you are isolating the humerus bone. A lot of times I see people just rotate their trunk and it looks like you're externally rotating the arm, but you're really not. So really make sure that that movement is just coming from right here and try and keep the rest of your body very still. So now we get to the fun stuff, working on shoulder flexion. There are a few different ways I like to perform this. First, I always start laying down. Remember, we're isolating the arm bone. So if you sit up, you're gonna get a lot of movement of the shoulder blade. We're trying to stabilize the shoulder blade as much as possible and just focus on isolating the arm. And then from there, there's a lot of variety depending on the patient and depending on what's going on. If I need to block the elbow with either a knee immobilizer, I like the knee immobilizers because they're a little bit sturdier and they're a little bit longer, or an ear splint which I've showed in some other videos and I'll put a link for that video with the ear splint in the description below. And then I have an extremely rigid custom plastic elbow immobilizer for really extreme cases where someone has a really strong flexor tone, I'll put this on there. But if you have a lot of spasticity in your bicep, it will be near impossible to keep your elbow straight. I've gotten that comment on other videos is that my arm bends, I can't keep it straight. It just will. Remember the body has a lot of movement patterns that can happen after a stroke. So I'm constantly trying to find ways to isolate joints and break up some of those patterns. So I will use something to block the elbow. And then from there, there are a few different hand positions. I love using a dowel rod because it really requires you to get the arm completely externally rotated. Now you also have to have good flexibility in the forearm. You have to be able to do what we call supinate. If your hand turns down a lot, then those muscles are gonna be really tight and it's gonna be really hard to get the palms up to put it on a dowel rod, but you are going to maintain that shoulder external rotation. So we're isolating flexion while maintaining the external rotation for a patient or for anyone who doesn't have that flexibility in their forearm. I might use a Pilates ring and I'll put a link for that in the description below as well as this blue strap. I use them all the time if you don't have grip to help that arm. And then again, you're still maintaining some external rotation. If the Pilates ring spins or turns or you see your arms kind of cross over each other, that means you've lost that external rotation or that arm is trying to pull in, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid. So that is a key to you to, to regroup, readjust, and maybe not lift the arm up as high or really use the other arm to control this. So in either one of these cases, we would call this active assist. So you are using your stronger arm to help a little bit, but there is some literature that suggests that 
when you do the movement together with the other arm that there is some what they call synaptic firing or there is some activity that goes on on the damaged side of the brain so it's it serves that purpose but also if you're really weak and you don't have anyone to help you it also allows you to perform the movement maybe before you have a strong enough connection to generate enough power to do that with the arm on its own without helping it so a couple of benefits to the pilates ring or the dowel rod now for some people that are extremely tight and their shoulder blades are really forward member i said that puts you at kind of a mechanical disadvantage so in some cases i will put like a little towel roll or something right in between the shoulder blades and have the patient have them lay on that that will help to kind of allow gravity to help position the shoulder blade in a better position to set someone up or to set you up for success in order to be able to raise the arm. So starting with active assist, super important, tons of value, a lot going on, lots of benefits to that. And that is shoulder flexion. The next one will be shoulder abduction or going out to the side. I call this a snow angel. The key to this one, again, is we're trying to maintain that external rotation. So you don't want the arm internally rotating and lifting. You really want that palm to stay facing up. Again, doing this when laying down. As I had mentioned earlier, a lot of times the arm wants to internally rotate when you lift it out to the side. Having the elbow blocked, if you have a lot of spasticity in the elbow flexors, will really help you with this one. The key is maintaining the palm up, so maintaining the external rotation. Even if you can only get the arm a few degrees away from your body, you really want to learn how to isolate that movement without the arm internally rotating. I say this in a lot of my videos, but it's not about quantity, it is about quality. Your brain is learning and it is going to learn whatever you practice. So doing something that's too challenging is not always beneficial if you think about the long long-term effects. Now I say this a lot and it is worth repeating. There are some of you out there that are totally content with made, with doing something with an abnormal movement pattern. There's actually probably more of you out there than will actually ever admit it to me. <laughs> Your goal is just to be independent and in that case a lot of my suggestions on getting that quality don't apply to you and that is totally okay. There are plenty of people out there that really just need to be independent out of necessity and so nothing wrong with allowing some abnormal movement pattern if that is you and you fall into that group. There's still value, you're still strengthening the arm. Just know that whatever you're practicing is really the movement that you are going to have two, three, four years down the road. Okay, now on to the next movement. So we've covered flexion, we've covered abduction, and now that diagonal pattern that I talked about, this one is going to be the most challenging in most cases after a stroke. There are a variety of different abnormal movement patterns that can happen, but in most cases, your arm wants to come down and internally rotate. So with this diagonal pattern, you're actually making like an X across your body. And before I show you the exercise, it's important to know that this is extremely advanced. This is probably the hardest movement to get back after a stroke that has affected your arm. But you're gonna start with your hand kind of on your opposite hip, and then you're going to bring the arm up and across your body, kind of like an X. So now we're not just starting with it externally rotating, but you're actually externally rotating it as you bring it up. And when you finish, your palm should be facing up. I tell people like a waiter, if you wanted to carry a platter on your hand, if you were standing up, if you can visualize that, that's kind of how your hand wants to be at the end of this. Now, a couple of key things, you definitely don't wanna just be bringing the shoulder up. You don't want the arm to stay internally rotated when you do it. If either of those are happening, go back to the previous exercise with either the dowel rod or the Pilates ring. And those are the movements to isolate the shoulder laying down. So to advance this, you would go ahead and do this now sitting up. And now we're gonna try and incorporate that rhythm. So because you're sitting up, 
You really want to start and set yourself up for success. Start with your chest kind of partially pointing up towards the sky. In the same progression with the arms, start with an active assist, either with the dowel rod where both palms are going to be facing up, or the Pilates ring if you don't have the range of motion to get your hands turned all the way over. You can always use the Pilates ring. And then you're going to try and lift. As you bring it up, you're gonna try and point your chest towards the sky. If you try and attempt this without the Pilates ring or the dowel rod, remember, if you're leading with your pinky finger or you're leading with your elbow pointing up, that means you're internally rotated. And if that is you, you definitely don't wanna reach above shoulder height because you're gonna cause damage to the shoulder, but also you're probably not gonna be able to lift the arm if you're in the early stages after a stroke and you don't have a really good connection with the muscles that lift the arm. Another variation that I like is sometimes just to sit on a wedge. I'll put a link for the wedge in the description below. What that kind of does is it kind of tips your pelvis forward a little bit and it almost makes you want to raise your chest up a little bit more so it gets those shoulder blades in a better position. I really like to start someone out with that and then progress down to just a normal height chair. Regardless of what, what height you're on, make sure that your feet are flat on the ground. Don't have them dangling because it does make it harder. Makes your trunk a little bit more unstable, which will affect the movement in the arm. And then it just so happens that I recently did this progression with a patient and we went through these steps and did each step several, several times. There was a ton of stretching and manual techniques that were incorporated into this to increase the mobility of the shoulder blade and also the mobility of the arm bone, specifically external rotation. And then this is his before him trying to raise his arms up. And then we went through a very, very, very similar progression to what this whole video has shown you. And then this was his after. So he is someone that does tend to internally rotate a little bit when he lifts his arm up. So he still does need the dowel rod, but you can see the before and after how much higher he was able to get his arms in this position. And we will do this as long as we need to until he can maintain that external rotation when he goes to lift his arm up. There is no rushing this process. You got to take the time at each step and just get the repetitions in. Repetition, repetition, repetition. That is the name of the game with quality movement. So hang in there, be patient with yourself, be patient with your recovery, and you can do this. You just have to stay the course and not try and rush the process. Probably the hardest part of stroke recovery that I can see just watching people go through this is the amount of patience that it takes to just be patient, stay determined, stay persistent. If you get that down, it makes your recovery and the potential that you have that much better and really does set you up to go that much further. And that is it. I hope you all enjoyed this series. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell. If you're new to my channel or you've been watching for a while and haven't yet subscribed, I upload a video every week with the sole purpose of helping you enhance your home exercise program. So if you haven't yet subscribed and you've been watching for a while and you haven't turned on that notification bell, I highly recommend it so that you will be the first to know when I upload new videos. For those of you that have subscribed and those of you who do interact in the comments, thank you, thank you, thank you your encouragement and your positive feedback and those of you who are telling your stories. It encourages and inspires me, but it also encourages and inspires everyone in this community. So I appreciate every single one of you. I appreciate you for watching. I enjoyed spending time with you today and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. You all have a great day.